alternative to a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi in terms of emulation. There are three manufacturers that make good alternatives that are either called tiny PCs or mini PCs. Lenovo makes them, HP makes them, and Dell makes them. You can see from this picture about how big they are. Um, when they're brand new, they're going to be around $1,000, maybe a little less. Um, but you can find used ones that are very reasonably priced, either under $200 or sometimes even under $100. They'll have different specs in them. Some are going to be better than others. But for an emulation machine, anything that has a Core i5 or better in it or a Ryzen CPU, AMD Ryzen CPU in it, is going to be very good for emulation, especially if it's an AMD Ryzen with an integrated Radeon GPU, you're going to get even good 3D performance in some cases. And this is what I chose. This is not the price I paid, but this is the model on Amazon that I found. And this particular one I'm going to show you in detail. I actually got this for much less. I got it for $132 with a Ryzen 5 Pro 2400 CPU in it, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 MVNE. This is a pretty well uh, spec system for the price. And you can find these on Amazon, on eBay, on Facebook Marketplace. And you can see some of the different options. If you just do a search, especially if you're willing to do shipping, you can even find some that are local to you can pick up in person and save on the shipping costs. You can see you can find them for about $100 with the i5. That's a pretty good price. This one doesn't show the CPU, but uh, anything that has, like I said, a Core i5 or a Ryzen or better or a Ryzen CPU is going to be pretty good. Even an i3 is, is going to be better than say a Raspberry Pi would be for emulation. So the Lenovo models are the Think Center Tiny. You can also find HP Elite Discs that are the same type of form factor, the same size, and you can find those also for about $100. If you know where to look, you can find some that are cheaper. You can definitely find some that are more expensive as well, so just be cautious of that. And for example, the Dell also makes the Optiplex Mini, and Optiplex Minis are kind of hard to search for because Optiplex is a, a brand name, that, model name they use on almost all, all their business PCs. So you're going to find some towers, you're going to find some small towers. So if you're looking for a Dell, look for one that is a Mini. And you can see when they're brand new, they are about $900, sometimes over $1,000, but that's with the latest Core i7 and fully fully specced out. Um, you can find them on places like eBay for less than 200, sometimes less than 100. For a Core i7, that's a really good price right there. So you can find these, um, and I I would definitely not spend more than 200 dollars if you're getting it for emulation. You don't need to spend that much. So here's what I eventually ordered. It is a Lenovo Think Center M715Q tiny desktop. It has an AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 2400 GE processor, which has the integrated Radeon graphics. And here you can see the specs. As mentioned, 2400 GE, 8 gigabyte DDR4 RAM is what it came with, a 256 MVNE, PCI M2 SSD, has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. It uses VGA and DisplayPort for output, but you can convert that DisplayPort to HDMI with an adapter, so don't worry about that. Here you can see all the USB ports on the back. It does have Ethernet as well, two more USB ports on the front. And if we compare it in size to a Raspberry Pi 4, it is obviously bigger. 
but you can do a lot more than what a Raspberry Pi 4 can do. You can do things like PS2 emulation really well on this machine. And comparing it inside to an optical DVD drive that you would use in a desktop machine, it isn't much bigger than just an optical drive would be. Of course, there is no optical drive in this machine. We're going to store everything on the SSD. So this is a pretty awesome machine, and I'm going to show you how to install Batacera on it. So this particular vendor I bought this machine from gave me a, a display port to HDMI adapter, and it's tiny, this little thing here. But it's pretty cheap, and uh, my Samsung TV didn't really like it. Uh, so I had already purchased one of these. I didn't know it came with one, and this one is a little bit longer. But uh, this one works much better. The uh, Samsung TV gives me the full resolution. With this one, it was not accepting the full resolution, and it was just making it extra large, and it didn't look nearly as good as it could. So definitely would recommend something a bit better for your DisplayPort adapter to get to HDMI. In case you want to see what is inside of this small machine, I'm going to take the cover off and show you how you get to the memory and storage. So I just took the back screw off and now I'm sliding off the cover. And now you can see a laptop sized uh, drive bay. So you could put a SSD in that drive bay there as a secondary drive. If you want to get to the M.2 slot and the memory underneath, you have to take this screw out and remove this little tray. Now be careful because that sensor in the front is the Bluetooth antenna and it is taped to this little tray. You want to carefully remove the tape is easier with two hands and now you have access to two laptop size memory slots and the m.2 drive this came with a 256 gig m.2 drive and i upgraded mine to one terabyte so to get your batacera image first go to batacera.org and then when the site comes up you want to go to download and you want to find the image for x86. You should be able to find this under popular downloads and there's the link for desktop, laptop, Intel-based computers, including Intel-based Apple computers. You want to click the download link here and it's going to give you a Z GZ file so just find a place where you want to download it, click save, and it'll take a few minutes to download. It is going to be almost three gigs. So once you've downloaded your GZ file, you can use a tool like 7-Zip to extract it. The resulting image file is almost 8 gigs, so make sure that your USB drive is large enough to hold this 8 gig IMG file. At this point you can delete the GZ file unless you want to archive it somewhere. Now I'm going to insert the bootable Ubuntu flash drive to start up the system. I'll press power on the front. You could do this with the case on. I left the case off just in case I had to do something with the SSD drive to troubleshoot. Now once it comes up, it'll give you this menu. You want to select Try Ubuntu without installing. This will just boot from the live flash USB drive.
Once it's fully booted, click this menu button in the bottom left corner and just type disks and it'll bring up the disk utility and just verify the drives that it's showing. So make sure the drive you want to restore onto is selected. In this case, it's a terabyte. And I'm going to restore disk image. And then I'm going to select from my USB drive the Batacera image that I had downloaded earlier. Press open, start restoring. And there we go. Now we are restoring our Batacera image to our SSD drive. And when we are done with this, we'll go ahead and reboot, take out the USB drive. And you saw it quickly there. Boot from the SSD, expand the storage system to the full size of the drive. And now it's batting, booting Batacera. Now when you boot the first time, you're going to need one of two things, either a wired USB controller or you need a keyboard. And you can use a wireless keyboard, especially if it's got a little dongle like this one. This is a cheap $20, maybe it's $30 now, Logitech keyboard, and it's great for this sort of thing. By default, when you start it up, your space bar is going to bring up your start menu. Your escape button is going to be your back or B button and your enter is going to be like your A button. So you, when you boot it up, you'll hit space, cursor down to controller, Bluetooth settings, hit. To connect your Bluetooth controller, go to the main menu, go to controller and Bluetooth settings, go to pair a Bluetooth device then activate your Bluetooth controller. This is an 8-bit DOE controller. Hit the pairing button. And then you'll see it'll pop up on the screen that it's pairing the controller and it'll say connected. Now cursor up to controller mapping because we need to map the buttons. Hold a button on this controller and then press A, B, X, Y, start, select, up, down, left, right, L1, R1, and then the left analog up and left, right analog up and left, L2, R2, L3, which is push in on the left analog, R3, which is push in on the right analog, and for hotkey, select the start select button, and now you're mapped. By, now by default, you'll see that the interface is showing Mega Drive and the blue Dreamcast logo and PC Engine instead of Turbo Graphics. So to change that, go into the theme configuration and change the region to US. And then it'll swap it to Genesis. And turbo graphics instead of PC Engine. Now I found that the audio output was defaulting to the speaker built into the PC and to get to that you want to go into the main menu go to system settings and then go down to hardware and you want to switch the audio profile from auto to HDMI and select the auto output audio output to the HDMI digital stereo. Once you do that, then the audio should work fine. So by default, the sound volume might be pretty low. You just have to go into sound settings and change the system volume and just crank it all the way up. Then after that, you just control it from your uh, remote control. And another way you can do this is just with the keyboard. So that was with the controller. And if you have that USB keyboard plugged in, it's 
it's even easier with the USB keyboard. You could just hit the volume up key. I put it up to about 95. And then after that, I control it with the remote. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like by default. It's four by three. And I don't know if you can tell, but in the distance, things kind of have a motion blur. So you have to go into the settings and fix this. So go into display, turn the trails off, because that's going to fix the blur. And you want to set the set widescreen to on if the emulator is in widescreen mode. You're going to see when we go out that now it's going to look skinny because we're not in widescreen mode, but now there's less of that blurriness. So it's already better, but we need to exit out and restart to fix it. So you can change the settings for the emulator as a whole by pressing select and go into advanced system options. And then you want to go into display or, or rendering. I think it might be. Let's go into rendering first. Here's the defaults. Um, let's make sure you select Vulcan because that's going to be better. The resolution. Um, you can try different settings. I found that and that's under decorations. Right now you can see how I have it set to none. That means no bezels. If you select some auto, it's gonna show other bezels. So now I should be good. And if I relaunch by city, it'll then be in widescreen and three times resolution is gonna look better. It's still not going to show, it's gonna not gonna save my settings within the game until I reach a point where I hit a save point and then in this game it'll save it. It depends on the game and how they handle widescreen whether and where they're gonna save it, if they save it at all. Some you might have to set every time you start it. And if that's too annoying, then I guess just play it in four by three. So this is I'm gonna go ahead and skip some of these cutscenes, get back to where I can control it. Can't skip this one. Actually, let me go back out and see. You can tell that we got the blur back on again and we are now stretched. So now, if we go back into display, again, set the trails off and set white screen on. Now, look at that. Look how much better this looks now. And it's, you know, scrolling is nice. There's no blur. It's nice and crisp. So now once I reach a save point, it will start save these settings and then it'll always start this way. All right, so I've driven to the uh, hotel, ocean view. Now I can save and it should save my preferences now. Yes, I want to format. And yes, I want to save the game. Now, one thing I noticed when I upgraded from one version of Batacera to the 
newer version 37, it lost the saves I already had, up, had on here. Once you start playing, you probably don't want to re, uh, upgrade Batacera because you're going to leave lose your progress on your save games, most likely. And I did try a couple different versions of Batacera with PS2 on this box, and definitely 37 is much better than 35. It's uh, much smoother for the same settings.